implication on the news are tonight. Aftab Gul is Salman Bhatt's lawyer joining us from Lahore. Mr. Aftab Gul, thank you very much for joining us. Bishan Singh Bedi needs no introduction, cricket's legend. Also, the legendary cricket journalist Kishore Bhimani. The outstanding cricket historian Boria Mojumdar and the founder of cricketnext.com. I couldn't have asked for a better panel tonight on the news. Sanjay Jha, welcome. Thank you very much. Bishan Singh Bedi, I want to start with you tonight. What do you think? What are the questions? The question which comes to my mind is, why was Pakistan, the Pakistan cricket board in a state of denial till now? Well, uh, see, the good old story is that you don't accept the guilt unless you proven guilty. And this particular case, I'd like to emphasize that uh, perhaps the ICC with all its toothlessness um, left the entire uh, ball game to the British uh, judiciary. Oh yes. And I must admire with all my reservations that the British sense of justice has really prevailed for the benefit of uh, cricket at large <coughs> not just in Pakistan but all over the world. That's it's a very strong point. I'm going to come to the ICC point in just a bit. May I ask you, Mr. Aftab Gul, you're Salman Butt's lawyer. Uh, Salman Butt has been found guilty on both counts. Your client therefore faces up to seven years in uh, prison. Can I, for can I just... If, it could face up to seven years in prison, Mr. Gul. Yes, I know, I know. Right, right. Let me come in. Look, Mr. Bedi is not... You're not right in saying that I am, I am his lawyer. I am not no longer his lawyer. I was a lawyer only up till the initial stage when we wanted to have the interim injunction lifted. But I have gone through this case, you know, from one end to the other. And I have always, I was always of the view that uh, there was not sufficient evidence on the file to, con to gain a conviction. And I, I don't entirely agree with all these, uh, you know, these, these cliches of praise which Mr. Bedi has handed out to British sense of justice. You see, normally in such cases there is, there is a unanimous verdict from the jury. Yesterday it was a hung jury as far as I am concerned. And the judge sent them back and said, you can do it 10-2. But that's not the point. We have to wait now. We have to wait to see what is the judgment. What is the judgment and what is the sentence? Is it a suspended sentence? What do you sentence, believe in? Or will it be a custodial sentence? What, what do I you, don't know. May, may I ask you? May I, I ask don't know. You, I don't know. I re, may I ask you? What you, you are acquainted with the facts of the case. See, okay, I take it you are not his lawyer now, but you are acquainted with the facts. I know. May I, 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 may I ask no, you, no. Mr. Gul? Mr. Gul, my yes. question to you is this, please. Yes. Two no yes. balls uh. from Mohammad Amir and one from Mohammad Asif were bowled yes. exactly at the same time in the match that had yes. been predicted in a secretly filmed tape by Mazar Majid. Do you genuinely believe Quite right. that this, is a mere, this was a mere coincidence? No. It's not a case, you see, it's not about belief, you see, it's not about belief. The question here is, who wasn't, I mean, what was the, what was the focus of the case? The focus of the case was that these boys had to be proved guilty. <laughs> it was not, not for them to prove their innocence. It was for them to prove their guilt. My contention is, you see, morally you may be convinced. Morally, as people are, even I am convinced about some Indian players, you see. Raina, for example, was caught with an Indian, with the girlfriend of an Indian uh, oh, uh, bookmaker. Oh, okay. And, you know, Gibbs ran away from uh, India. Oh, yes, yes. Now, listen <laughs> to me, please. Give me, just bear with me for a minute. I, the I'm question with you. here is, I'm with you. the question is, that you may be morally convinced, you may be morally convinced, but my contention is that there was not sufficient evidence to make out a judicial, judicially sustainable conviction against these boys. You see, look at it. You know, they had to rely on a turncoat. They had to rely on somebody like Amir how does to that, build a how does that matter? between uh, that Mazar Majid character. How does that matter? No, no, of course it does. This was a court of law. This is a court of law. This is a court of law. No, no, one second. You see, they, I mean, they jumped the gun. May look, I ask look, you? They, they went... Mr. Uh, Bhatt? Look, Mr. Gould? British sense of justice. Mr. Gould? May, may I, may I, may, may I finish? May I finish? Sorry. May I finish? You may ask me later on. May I finish? You see, British sense of justice. I mean, they went into Iraq, you see, without even confirming the <laughs> weapons of mass destruction and so on and so forth. I mean, all that, that is, that is all. Oh, I mean, it's nothing. It's neither here nor there. These boys have been wronged. I tell you, these boys, and if they go in appeal, if they go in appeal now in judicial review, I tell you that the British courts in appeal will not sustain this judgment. They will not uphold it. Yes, 
I I I am I am with you. One minute. One minute. One. I I wish to say here one thing. I remember this is the kind of argument that I think Rashid Latif pointed out when he said this whole controversy is probably a setup. This leaked video is a setup. My question is, even if it was a even if it is a setup, it did show out some ethical flaws. No. Uh, Mr. Gul Boria Mojum, the cricket historian, wants to respond to you, and then I'm coming to all my panelists, including Mr. Bimani. Yes, Boria. I am not saying it is a setup. I am not saying it is a setup. I am not saying it is a setup. No, I am not saying that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mojum. You, you, you've even that. gone farther, Mr. Gul. You've gone farther. You've actually said that the the sentence will not be. I mean, the the guilt charge will not be sustained in a court of appeal. You know, I could only say that Salman Bhatt should reinstate you straight I away. Think you should get the job back. You know, you should get the job back of his lawyer and try and go <laughs> <to> defend <laughs> him <laughs> once again in the UK. I, 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 I gave it up. No, no, no. <laughs> may I? Uh, look, may look, I gave it up. May I? May I? Uh, no, no, I gave it up myself. May I? Just allow me to finish. Please, please, please. Allow please. me to finish. Please. The fact of the matter is, 10-2 or 11-1, at least by one count, it was unanimous. That's what we get. It's a charge clearly of guilt and they have been proven guilty. It has never ever happened in cricket that people will go to jail in this case. There is a possibility of people going to jail. It's a, it's a criminal conviction. They are a curse to world cricket. The fact of the matter is they have shamed the game not only in Pakistan but for the matter in entire part of the world. They have you know, aggrieved fans like us. They have put Pakistan cricket in its worst form of crisis and after that if you say that it's a question of whether they've been proven guilty or not and it's a 10-2 or 11-1 and why it was not unanimous yesterday you know it's simply ridiculous why on earth would you finally not accept that this is an no, opportunity no. to cleanse the game try and accept okay, this opportunity to cleanse the game oh i see i see yeah i see Mr. the Gold. icc oh i know i know we all know about the icc look look i mean you are going much farther afield I mean, I am uh, Mr. Comper, I don't know your name, you are going much farther afield. You see, uh, this was about this case alone. You are now tarnishing the name of Pakistan. Let me respond now to this accusation. Let me tell you, I mean, how many times have Indian players been accused of this? The cases have never gone farther than what the, the, the uh, an news item in the, lo in the Indian press or whatever. It's of course, this is not an, I am not saying it's an, this no, not an but you see, you've gone far. You say, you've tarnished, we have tarnished the name of cricket. You see, whenever an opportunity arose for people to be arrested, Gibbs ran away from, from New Delhi airport or Bombay or whatever it was. You see, I mean, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying they're not guilty. I'm not, uh, all I'm saying is that judicially sustainable proof was not on the file. This is all I'm saying. No, don't misunderstand Mr. me. Gould, you may be convinced there is such like so many others. One minute, one minute, Boria. Yeah. Gentlemen, gentlemen, temporary truce. My question tonight is... No, no, one second. Let's not get it wrong. I, I want to place one fact on, on, on record here tonight on the news. Uh, Mr. Gul, you know, I am not asking tonight. I am sure Kishore Bhimani also is not asking tonight. Why is it that Pakistan traditionally, if you look at the statistics, I am told, bowls about 27% more no balls than any other country in the world. That is not something which we can link to any, any any other thing. We are not asking why Asif's 58 career no balls of just under two per test was actually low in comparison to his contempt. I'm not pulling statistics out. The question tonight is this, sir, uh, and Kishore Bhimani. It wasn't, was it, Mr. Bhimani, about the PCB or cricket alone? Their interior minister jumped at it. The sports minister jumped at it. I think Wajid Shamshul Hassan, you know, made it a huge patriotic issue saying you know, this is an attempt to sully the name of Pakistan. So it was not about cricket alone. Was it Kishore Bimani? May I uh, give a minority view Arnab? Yes. That today the four major cases of, uh, uh, of match fixing that have come to light. One where Mark Warp, Shane Warren and Tim May were involved. Australia supported them to the hilt. Yes. Hansi Cronier when I was involved in the case, I tried to get from Dr. Ali Barker yes. a reflection on what uh, uh, was happening with Hansi Cronier and Herschel Gibbs. And he said it's absolutely preposterous. The Indian police don't have a clue. Oh. The Indian cricket writers are maligning us. When, Indian, when this happened in India, we said everybody... Now the Pakistan is supporting their own people. My point, Arnab, is only one. Yes. In all the people involved thus far, five or six of the greatest cricketers in the world have been involved. No mention has ever been made of taking them to court, putting them in jail. And here are two kids and one Salman Bhatt, the captain, who have wronged, throw them out of the game, fine. Don't talk about jail, don't talk about criminal uh, conspiracy, because it has never happened in the case of Azharuddin, Salim Malik, Hansi Kronye, uh, 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 Tim May, Shane Warne or, uh, uh, or Mark Waugh. 
No, but sir, somebody is going to put statistics Thank and say, of the 14 cricketers who have been banned for match, match fixing, some five are Pakistani players. And at the age of 18, now somebody has the unique distinction so, I mean, of being are, the youngest so player to be banned. Oh, statistics. Yes? I mean, I don't. Look, 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 I don't want to quote Siegfried Sassoon. Statistics are damn lies. There's nothing else. They don't prove anything. Sanjay Jha joins the statistics, debate right statistics, now. Statistics, damn lies. Sa Sa Sanjay Jha. Okay, yeah. we are not going by statistics, Mr. Gul. We are going to go by the facts and the issues tonight for debate. Point taken. Sanjay Jha. Yeah, I, I think the fact remains that Pakistan has been a basket case where uh, you know match fixing and corruption has been concerned. I think I read Shoaib Akhtar's very controversial book where he himself concedes that there have been serious problems, including illustrious colleagues like Wasim Akram himself. So there have been uh, you know a grave uh, threat emerging from this part of the world. And it, but at the same time, Arnab, I would like to add that this is a subcontinental issue as well. I mean, our part of the entire, you know, entire world actually generates a lot of cash money, and there is a lot of drug mafia. Sure. There, is, there is underworld money, and because cricket's governance has been so weak, if you look at ICC, Good for point. example, Good Arnab, point. Point. the anti-corruption unit is is actually a toothless tiger. Yes. So what what is required in terms of a solution? is an independent body that can take its own extreme steps like yes. like an ombudsman yes. that can go ahead and question any player from the most powerful board in the country or in the world and say hang on I need to I have a suspicion on you I'm going to ask you tough questions so I think it's been a collapse of governance but where Pakistan is concerned I think Mr. Gould needs to definitely review his stance because the truth is that a lot of things have gone wrong and we can't keep all the time saying that these are humble players they're susceptible because they come from you know very weak backgrounds, uh, weak yes. backgrounds because no, no, no. at the end of the day it's a game that suffers the stigma on cricket you know so what I'm feeling bad about yes, yes. imagine the innocent cricketers the professionals who play for the country with pride 